and welcome back to me channel. Unless you're new here, and just welcome. My name is Rusty, and this is me channel where I talk about me favorite movies, mostly horror, and me favorite music, mostly metal. And welcome to day seven, the conclusion of this found footage festival. Now, I can hear you out there, but where's Cloverfield? I'm going to do all three of them. Um, where's Paranormal Activity? I'm going to do all of them in a series. Think. It's okay. I've got 2,200 plus movies. I'll get around to the shit, okay? But I really liked this movie. It was very disturbing. And we are going to finish out this festival with... The Last Horror Movie. Now, unrated director's cut. The Last Horror Movie was released in 2003. It was directed by Julian Richards. It was written by James Handel and Julian Richards. And it stars Kevin Howarth, Mark Stevenson, and Antonia Beamish. Yes. It really was. And um, this is a video nasty. Now, this is a Section 3 video nasty. I bet you thought there was just the original. But um, video nasties are actually um, divided into three sections. You can look on Google to find them. The last horror movie is a Section 3 video nasty. And, yeah... Does it deserve it? Yeah. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, being a video nasty, but uh, there's some, it's, uh, it, it's disturbing. <laughs> so I think a lot of people think that video nasty is about the gore. So if you judge this movie just totally on the gore, of which there is, you would be like, it's not that bad. I've seen worse, um, a lot worse. Um, but I think, but that's not what video nasties are. Video nasties have many different aspects of what makes them a video nasty. And this movie is damn disturbing. So I think that that's why it made it. The kills are grotesque. It's pretty good. There, we'll get to it. So, this movie opens um, with what appears to be a generalized cheesy horror movie. Um, you hear news reports about three escaped serial killers from death row. Um, you're hearing these radio reports um, in this car. And you're hearing them describe these horrible murders that have taken place. And then we see a waitress alone in a diner in a very spooky atmosphere. And we see the headlights of that car pull in. And she goes about her business. And then she is, you know, there's a couple jump scares. And she is then like this, the, this masked killer, like Jason, you know, appears behind her. And starts to stabbing her. And then all of a sudden the movie cuts to this individual person like myself. Standing in front, sitting in front of a cam. And he's talking to you. And he's like, hi viewer. I'm sure this isn't what you expected when you rented this tape. But I have recorded over it. And I'm going to take you on a little journey. And you're like, okay, well, this is interesting. <laughs> okay. So we are introduced by to Max Perry. And let me tell you, okay, let me express something to you. Fucking, you know, Bateman, Patrick Bateman. Dexter and shit like that. You ain't got shit on this dude. All right. I'm just going to tell you right now. This motherfucker is crazy. <laughs> okay. So he is um, showing himself um, t and starts telling you stories about his kills, um, which he has recorded. And now 
on this random rented videotape, which isn't the movie that you rented. Instead, he recorded over it. Um, so he is going to do that. So he begins, you know, telling his story, um, and we see that he is a wedding photographer, and um, he has an assistant that's walking around with him. You don't see him at first, and that's filming him telling his story, and then we see his first kill, and it's this guy named Tim, and it's 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 pretty yeah. It's pretty all that. Um, then after that, he starts talking philosophy. Because you know these are edits, right? Edits. So you see this horrible kill where he like bashes this guy to death with a meat tenderizer. You know, the the little thing with a square and the little bumps on it, you know, to tenderize meat. So that was interesting. So then you you see him like he talks all this philosophy, you know, about I bet you think I'm a bad person, you know, and, you know, he goes through all of this kind of stuff. Um, we then see him. Um, and I love the way that they film the edits, because sometimes you think he's just going to kill somebody. And then it turns out to be his sister and his and her two kids and they're sitting down to dinner, you know. And you're like, I thought he was just going to kill this bitch. So, <laughs> you know, like like that scene, for instance. It shows this kid standing outside of school, and he looks about nine years old, and he, you know, turns to his assistant, and he's like, let's go get him. And I'm like, uh-uh. I mean, I know this is a video nasty, but no. What are you just going to do? And he goes up and he tells that kid, he's like, you know, are you waiting for your mom? You know, and the kid's like, yeah. And he said, well, mom told me to pick you up. So, you know, let's, you know, come with me. My car's over here. And I'm like, oh. And then, you know, he, he's like, then all of a sudden he's at the door and the mom opens the door, and he goes running in, and it turns out to be his sister and his kid, so it was all legit, and you're like, Phew. you faked me out there, dude. I thought you was just a butcher, this little nine-year-old boy, and it's like, so you're like tense. You're like, you know, because you can't tell, like, when he's fisting to do something, and then when he's, like, playing with you. <laughs> so fucked up. Showing you pieces of his life. So... He has, you know, this little, this little evening with his sister and her kids. Um, you then see him cooking like meat. He he cooks like this meat. He's in the kitchen and he's banging out this meat, and he cooks like dinner for his uh, female friend of his. They used to date, but they're no longer dating. They're just, you know, mates now. So um, we get to see him have, you know, dinner with her. And then all of a sudden, it edits into him brutally strangling to death a woman in a car. And then having his assistant come and help him put her in the trunk, you know, the boot of the car, where you finally get to see the assistant. And he looks like a 17-year-old homeless kid, you know. So you're like, okay. Well, at least we know who's behind the camera now. So... There's um, more talk then about how he avoids capture. He changes up his methods and weapons and locations. And, you know, so he's like almost giving a TED talk on being a serial killer. And you're, you're very engaged this whole time, whether it's these horrible murder scenes or whether he's talking all of this philosophical shit about horror movies and um, killing and sort of challenging your morals and things like that. It, it's, it's very, very interesting. So he's also been trying to talk his insistent into doing one as well, killing someone. We then get to see him visit an old lady, and we're here once again. We're like, 
oh god what's he going to do to her and it turns out to be his grandmother telling funny stories and you're like you know this movie is like not letting you get in you know it it, it keeps like faking you out and you're like i like this I, I think i'm enjoying being slapped around by this movie mentally you know so he visits his grandmother and then it edits into him and this guy assistant following this lady home and he brutally stabs her and then tries to have a conversation with her as he dies as he tries to explain to her you know um why she's part of a bigger experiment um you know, why he's filming her death and everything. Then you see him having a, a regular dinner party with his four friends where they're playing hard truths. Uh, it's kind of, it's a British party game if you've never heard of it. Hard, hard truths is where you sit with your friends and you all agree. It's a very dangerous game. Don't try it at home. But you you sit with your friends, and you all agree not to get angry as you go around the table, having your friends not bash you, but tell really hard truths about their feelings about you. I like you for this, but you know, I think that your behavior about this is an asshole. I think your opinion sucks. I think that you're a, you know, not a very nice person. That's why they call it hard truths. And, um, it, like I said, it's a dangerous game to play because you could lose some friends, <laughs> you know, because I might agree to let you sit and talk shit about me, but then again, According to what the shit is, you might end up going, well, thank you very much. And fuck you too, motherfucker. As a matter of fact, I don't ever want to speak to you again. I didn't know you felt that way about me. Kiss my ass. I'm gone. So be careful with that game if you decide to play it. All I'm saying. They don't call it hard truths for nothing. So he plays this game with them. Um, he watches an interview. We see him watching an interview with the, with one of his victim's husbands crying on the news. And he then tells you, that's that woman that I stabbed. And I don't give a fuck about him. And he starts explaining to you why he doesn't care, you know, that he can sit here and watch this guy and he brutally murdered his wife. And so, yeah, so it's like got a lot of deep shit in it. So he murders, um, he then murders a couple. Um, that was horrid. I mean, cause he like has, but I understand what he was doing, which is a little scary, but he has them facing each other and they're all tied up. You know, the, she's tied up and he's tied up. Then he, like, tells the assistant, he's like, put the camera on his face. So, the camera is on that guy's face while you hear him brutally and horrifically stab her to death. While you watch the guy's face seeing his wife stabbed to death. Then, he, he switches. It's like, now put it on her face. And you see her laying there dead with her head slumped over while you hear horrible, disturbingly bad murder of this guy. Then you get a lecture from him about wondering why I didn't show you, didn't you? Hmm? Tell me. A little bit of you wanted to see, didn't you? When I was butchering that woman, you wondered why I wouldn't turn the camera that way. You wanted to see it, didn't you? And him too. Then all of a sudden, right in front of your eyes, it edits to the murders. And you get to see it. And then he comes back and he's like, you're happy now, aren't you? And you're kind of like sitting there going...
you know, the truth is, I did wonder why you were showing me his face. I wanted to see what you were doing to her, and vice versa. And I, I guess I am kind of satisfied now that you actually showed me what the fuck you did. Maybe you mind fucking me, man. <laughs> He'll get you, because you're like sitting there going, I'm not a psycho. It's a horror movie. I wanted to see what you were doing to the bitch. He makes you feel guilty. I'm not kidding. I was like, I, I felt like I was being exposed at that moment. <laughs> it was fucked up. So, you know, then we have him see um, him having dinner again with his sister and his brother-in-law and stuff like that. Um, we then see him at a wedding, filming a wedding, and we see him then following the new groom um, and catching the new groom cheating on his wedding day at the reception, right? That night out back. And he's filming him and he gets called. And that guy beats the shit out of him. Right? Beats the fuck out of him. Where we then edit um, to him, like telling the camera, I bet you're wondering why I showed you my ass getting beat. Yes, I got caught and I got my ass beat. And I bet you're wondering why I showed you. Well, let me show you why. And then it edits to him having that guy tied up in a garage, right, in a lockup somewhere, where he covers him in petrol and sets his ass on fire right in front of you. And that was gross. That was painful to watch, actually. And then he turns around after it's all over, and he's like, one good thing about being a psychopath. You never have to put up with any people's shit. And I'm like, you know, that's a good point. <laughs> good thing about being a psychopath, don't have to take any shit from any people, from people. Yeah, you don't have to take shit. Wait. Good thing about being a psychopath, you don't have to take any shit from people. And I wrote, good point, you know. So then we see a picnic with his friends. Um, he contemplates killing them. Um, but then says why he won't do it, but he could, um, it's enter, you know, then we see him interviewing him doing an interview. He's interviewing his assistant about taking the next step and killing someone too. We see them go out to like a park, you know, and, um, they're like pointing at different people, you know, what about him? What about her? What about him? As they choose, they end up kidnapping this, this lady. And, oh my God, this assistant is so stupid, you know, because the guy's filming it and he's like, okay, get, you know, do it. Let, you know, blunt object or something. And so he's got like this stick or something and he barely taps her on the head, right? And I mean, the victim in the terror that she was in, I swear underneath that she had to be laughing like, did he just really mean to kill me? Because... That barely made my hair flip, you know, and so he hits her a little harder the next time, and um, that pisses off Max, you know, and he, like, runs up there, and he's like, no, dude, you know, and he goes over there, and he bashes the counter, and he's like, that's how you do it, and then he was like, you know what, never mind, here, just take this knife, that should be easier for you. So he starts to do that, you know, but the assistant can't do it, right? And he ends up like going, I'm tired of this. I can't do it. I thought I would be able to do it. And, you know, I can't. I can't do it. It, didn't, it doesn't feel like I thought it was. And then he actually turned on Max, right? And he's like, not only and that, but you're going to stop too. You're fucking crazy, and you've got to stop this shit. And I started thinking, but you've, like, filmed him killing, like, 20 fucking people now. It's not like you've got the moral high ground here, baby. You know what I mean? But, okay. 
So he starts like, you know, but Max like kind of talks him out of it. And it's like he chickens out. So not only did he didn't kill the girl, but he didn't kill Max. And you're like, the next thing you see is fucking Max stripping him naked in a tub. Because that boy's dead. Of course. So... He's been, he's stripping him in a bathtub while he's talking to you. Um, and he lets you kind of know now who this was. It was a homeless guy that he had just like met, a homeless kid actually, because he looked about 17. So he met up with this homeless kid and like sucked him into this, gave him a place to stay, sucked him into this psychosis of his. Um, and the reason that he did it was because he is a middle, you know, he is a middle class person. He was never seen around that area. And he knew that if anything went sideways, that he could never be connected to this guy. So he definitely had logic about why he chose this guy. So now he's killed him and he's stripping him naked and that they could never be connected and then he starts telling you about how to get rid of a body. You know, one of the main things about being a serial killer is knowing how to not let them have much of a body left. So he puts up this big hacksaw thing and he's cutting him up. And then the next thing you know, um, he cooks him. And in the kitchen, you see him like cooking these big slabs of this boy. And then he feeds this boy to his sister and his brother-in-law and his two nephews that are like nine and six, while he himself eats as well. And they're like, you know, oh, this tastes really good. It's like really strange tasting. And he says that it's Venezuelan veal that he gets from a special butcher and stuff like that and I'm like sitting there going what the fuck I mean it was really gross that you feed that poor boy to your two fucking nephews that are nine and six that was just wrong you know I'm like I see why this motherfucker is on the video nasties right so he feeds that to his um, sister, grandmother, brother-in-law, and her two kids all sitting around a family dinner, eating that boy's assistant. You know, eating Max's assistant. Okay. So then he goes out to the club with his friends. Um, you had seen this homeless guy earlier. Another homeless guy that he almost killed, a drunk from a pub. Um, and he finds him again. That guy's scared to death of him because he pulled a gun on him back then, but he didn't kill him. And um, he says that, no, 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 I'm not going to hurt you. I want to offer you a job. And I'm like, oh, God, here comes another assistant, right? So he did. He got him to be the assistant. And you see him standing outside of a flat. And he is watching a guy watch that tape that you're watching. And he goes and knocks on the door and says that he wants to do an interview and stuff like that. And the guy is like, what are you talking about? Because the guy immediately recognizes him from the video, right? So he's like, wow, is that you on the video, the movie I rented? And he's like, yeah, you know, and I, I would like to talk to you about something. So he ends up going in there and he starts like giving him this guilt trip lecture about watching this horror movie. And what would he do if he knew that that was real and not fake? And the guy's like, I don't believe you and stuff like that. And so he didn't get the answer that he wanted. So he like suffocated him with a plastic bag, which was pretty grotesque to watch, you know. So... Um, he kills him. His, guy, his name was Neil, and he wanted to know, why did you watch this video all the way to the end? 
you know, why didn't you ever stop? So he's guilt tripping once again about you think he's bad, but you watch these horror movies. And once he tells you that it's real, you know, he wants some kind of acceptable answer about how you could dare judge him when you like watching this shit is basically what it is. So he takes the video out of the tape player and he takes it back to the video store. And then you see him following um, the next person who rents it. And he does the same thing. He's like killing them. He kills them. And then you have the final scene. And that's where he really fucks with your head. He starts going on about how you've got no right to judge him because you're watching this tape, because you're watching horror movies like this. And that, you know, that the reason that this movie is called The Last Horror Movie is because it's the last horror movie that you're going to see. Because he knows that you rented this movie. And if you're watching this last scene, he knows that you have watched it to the end and he wants to ask you this question and kill you. And that, how do you know he's not watching you right now outside the window? And how do you know that he's not already broken into your house? Now, um, and that this is going to be your last horror movie. Now, I admit, you know, and then he's like, I will be seeing you. And then he gives you this smile. And I wrote, wow, I'm a bit paranoid. Because I was. <laughs> you have been you have been so psyched out and mind fucked by this guy watching this movie that at the end I was literally justifying how this couldn't you know I'm not the only one with this movie I'm not the only one with this movie. <laughs> you can buy it on eBay. <laughs> so there's not just one copy of this movie. I didn't rent it. I bought it. There's no way for him to know that I've got this movie. But when he was doing his little speech at the end, I did look at my window. And when he started saying that shit about how do you know I haven't already broken into your house, I admit fully in public that I turned around. You know, because I'm like, This is bullshit, man, because I'm not the only one that owns this movie. I mean, you know, you can buy it. There's a lot, a lot of people that's got it, right? I mean, his whole point was that it was just one movie, which was actually a, a snuff film, and that he follows people home who rents that one movie, but there's not multiple copies, right? And there's no way he could know it, because I bought it on eBay, but... Didn't I buy this on eBay? Yeah, I bought this on eBay. It was brand new. It's not that expensive. I wanted it. I heard about it. But I'm like, well, how do you know you didn't buy it from that motherfucker? You know, maybe he's made copies now. And he's selling it on eBay. I didn't go as far as, like, looking at other outlets to make sure there just wasn't one seller on eBay selling multiple copies of this movie but that just goes to show you okay it had me psyched out for a second only a little bit i'm not stupid <laughs> it's like, you know, but goddamn i was so psyched out by the shit he kept saying it's like i said there was a couple times he got me like when he killed that couple and started you know going tell the truth you know you wanted to see it and instead i just showed you the other person's face it's kind of pissed you off didn't it and I had to admit that was true. 
Then he showed me, and then he turned around and bitched me out again, like, you know, going, now you're happy, aren't you? You're satisfied that you got to see the brutal, and it was brutal, the brutal stabbing, slashing, and gutting of these two people, and now you're finally satisfied. You know, and I'm like, I don't like you telling the truth to me like that. Thank you very much. So, this is a good movie. <laughs> it's very unique. And um, once you see the scenes that are in it, and it definitely belongs on the video nasty list. Um, and that's the last horror movie. And I'm not dead. <laughs> I watched it yesterday. <laughs> no. Yeah. I watched it yesterday. So it was like the middle of the night when I was watching this too. And that was not good for my psyche when this motherfucker's going, I'm outside your window right now. And I'm like, yeah, fuck you. But I should look just to be sure. I'm glad I got an outside light. But yeah, the last horror movie, 2003. Um, he is, he is a, yeah, it's, it's a Patrick Bateman, Dexter, all you motherfuckers, this Max, Max, Max Perry right there. That, that, that motherfucker's crazy. All right. He's just flat out. You got to be crazy to feed your assistant, some 17 year old boy, cut him up and feed him to your nephews for God's sakes. It's a fucked up movie, all right? I'm telling you, you'll like it, okay? <laughs> Get it. Um, yeah. It did its job. <laughs> it was very good. So I will see you in the next thing I do. I'm actually fixing to do my May update um, so that I don't get another month behind, so that I don't get in that situation again. So, yeah, I will be back with my goodies in a moment. And, um, yes, that was the last horror movie from 2003 it's a very trippy movie very uh brutal very violent uh but also very very psychologically mindfuck you it will do that and it won't even ask your permission it will just do it so i will see you in the next thing love you miss you bye bye thank you very much for if you've seen this please let me know <laughs> did it psych you up <laughs> Did it psych you out just a little? Tell the truth. And um, I will see you in the next thing. Love you, miss you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much for commenting or stopping by. And I will see you in the next. Always remember, never forget, you're a very, very special person. Even you are, even if you are not a fucking psycho like Max Perry, right? He's got to be on the list now. Patrick Bateman, Dexter, Max Perry. Uh, yeah, he's definitely on the list. Video Nasty. Uh, it's very cool to have, and uh, yeah, keep rocking very, very hard, and keep screaming, but only when appropriate. Bye-bye.